Hello everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel and today we are talking about physics and I have Zan Khalid. Welcome Zan, welcome to the show, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. So Zan, uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, what are you studying and uh, what's your background? Yeah, thank you for having me here. Um, my name is Zan Khalid and basically I'm from Bihari. So I did my bachelor's in physics from the Islamia University of Bahawalpur and then I have some research projects in from the university and I did one internship at NCP which is National Center for Physics Islamabad which was on a project regarding CERN which is the uh, nuclear research center for Europe. All right. And uh, you are currently in Erasmus Mundus Joint Masters program, EMJM, and uh, your program is called IMAP. So can you share a little bit about your program as well? And uh, uh, also uh, a little bit about what are the requirements for uh, getting into this program? Okay, so the program is IMAP, which is Advanced Methods in Particle Physics. Of course, the requirements are you have to have a bachelor's degree in physics mostly. And uh, so the program is based mostly on data science, particle physics, mathematics. You can figure it out. But um, I would say the requirements are you have to, you know, to be you have to have some mathematical background in physics. So we have our first semester in France. Then I'm currently pursuing my second semester in Germany here. And then I'll be going to Bologna, Italy. And then the fourth one, we have a lot of options for internships. So as you know, which is usually the case in Erasmus Mundus. So yeah. That sounds really interesting. And so there are three main countries, uh, France, Germany, and Italy. So uh, can you share a little bit about, are there any other programs in Erasmus Mundus catalog related to physics, or is this the only one? No, I guess there are a lot of physics programs, like there is a nuclear physics program and then there is a LASCALA, which is lasers and accelerators, which is a bit relevant to IMAP, which is also relevant to particle physics and accelerators. So I guess there is also a program Quartman, which is quantum computing. There is also another, uh, another one for quantum computing, which is Quantim. And then there are some of the project, uh, some of the programs which are more relevant to physics as well as engineering, such as uh, Europhotonics and some photonics stuff. All right. So my next question from you would be, uh, why did you specifically choose uh, this program or any other? I'm asking this question because many students would be considering to apply for uh, different programs. So maybe you can share. Uh, your reasons, which can maybe help many other people as well. Yeah, so I was uh, basically interested in nuclear and particle physics, which are a bit relevant fields. So I did my final year project uh, of my of my thesis bachelor's for in experimental particle physics. So I applied for nuclear uh, physics program, La Scala, and of course this one. So I was selected in this one, fortunately. And then I'm happy to join. Uh, so as I said, I have my uh, bachelor thesis in particle physics. I also did internship in particle physics. So yeah, it was the most relevant one and I was selected. So yeah, there was, it was the best option I could say. All right. And can you share a little bit about a uh, number of students in your cohort? And is it a very diverse uh, group? or uh, are mostly people are from Europe. Can you share a little bit about that as well? A very diverse program indeed, because we have around 38, 40 people, which are around, from around the, uh, around the world. Like we have people from Australia, Mexico, Brazil, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, uh, not Bangladesh, but Turkey. And then there are a lot of from Europe, which includes France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and maybe one or two more so yeah it's very diverse hmm. interesting okay moving forward so of course uh this question comes into the mind of anyone who's watching this video what 
kind of students can apply for this program. So anyone with physics background or any other students can also pursue this program as well. I think most of the students which are admitted till now, they, they have their background in physics. Physics or more relevant to mathematical physics because it's more of you have to have the understanding of mathematics and physics, that's for sure. So I don't think you can enter with an engineering degree or some other degree. All right. So as we are talking about this program, um, so let's talk about the application process as well. So what are the uh, dates and deadlines for the next intake? And also if you can share uh, what kind of motivation you need to get into this program? Uh, so the, I think important dates are, you can say from January to 15 March, because I think 15 or 17 March is the deadline. So you have to prepare yourself beforehand. And then for the entrance, I would say that indeed you, you must be interested in particle physics and you should be aware of particle physics, which, what actually the program is. And then if you have some relevant project like I had with CERN, so it's pretty easy if you, if you are more into particle physics itself. All right. So let's talk a little bit about france and germany so you studied in france now you are in germany so how was your experience in france and compared to that how is it going in germany okay so that's an interesting one because uh in france we had more theoretical courses and here we have more experimental so I would say I'm more interested in experimental physics. So in France, I was pretty bored at some stuff at some point because uh, you have to do a lot of mathematics problem solving. But here I'm more into chill zone because now I have more background in experimental physics. And then I would say Germany is a bit more of my kind. The people are a bit cold, but they are more open overall. In Germany, we have more international students and mm, and then I would say Germany has more cold stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk about um, the difficulty of this program because generally uh, Erasmus Mundus programs have a reputation that the difficulty of studies isn't very high for many programs. I want to know a little bit about your, how challenging uh, is it for you? Is it uh, very tough or you are finding your way? Uh, I don't know about others. There, this one is not that easy, I would say, but it mainly depends on your background. If you have a good background, uh, if you have a mathematical background, let's say theoretical background, then it's easy for France semester and then it, you, you would have maybe difficulty in the experimental one, which is small in Germany or Italy, but I would say it mainly depends on, on your background. If you have a good one, then it's a good to go. All right. And let's talk about the opportunities for students uh, after doing this program. I know it's a little tricky question because you haven't reached that stage yet. Uh, but what do you think? Are there uh, a lot of opportunities for students with this uh, this degree in Europe and also outside Europe? The opportunities are pretty good, I would say, because uh, this is the first cohort for international students. But uh, we had two previous batches from Europe. So the previous students, which are the alumni of the program, they are more into some of them are doing PhD in Italy, in Germany, or maybe in Canada, I think. And some of them are also doing data science or they are like data scientists in various companies. So I think in both the cases, if you are more into physics or if you are more into data science or, you know, computer science stuff, then there are a lot of opportunities. All right. And there's also um, a European Center of Nuclear Research called CERN. And that is, I guess, the best one in the whole Europe. So can you share a little bit about that center as well? And since your degree is very relevant, so what kind of opportunities you guys can have there? 
okay so the the field the particle physics it's more relevant to you know with CERN which is the uh, nuclear research center for Europe and with the Fermi lab which is in the US but CERN has an edge that it has you know it's the, it's one of the largest uh, laboratories in the world and it's focused mainly on particle and nuclear physics so uh, most of our professors they work with CERN or I also did like in my bachelor thesis I worked with CERN so yeah some of them the professors are experts in the field from CERN and we they are also visiting CERN and there are also uh, some other research centers like DESI which is the German research center and there are maybe you have heard of Max Planck Institute and then there is ICTP which is uh, International Center for Theoretical Physics in Christi, Italy. So there are a lot of laboratories for which you can work and if you are more interested into PhD and research stuff then it's a good to go. All right, and since we are talking about education in Europe, so you must have an idea after living in Germany about the overall um, education system. And we see a lot of students also apply directly to study in Germany. So if you can share a little bit for all those who are interested in Germany about uh, how's uh, the student life and how difficult or how easy is it for generally international or foreign students to study in Germany. Okay, if you if you compare, look for example, I can compare with France or Pakistan. So, in French, the people are more introverted. It it, it it also depends on the weather because in winter people are more into their houses and in summer people are more uh, outwarded or they like to go. Uh, in summer you can you know you have more opportunities to hang around so i think in germany the education is more practical it's more enhanced because uh, germans are famous for their engineering so if if you are into physics or let's say engineering or maybe in business management then i would say germany is one of the best places in the world mm -hmm. uh, mostly in if you are into like engineering or physics or mathematics stuff then I think it's a must uh, you should consider it of course um, that's worldwide famous as well and another question of my interest is the living expense so you have lived in France you have lived in Germany so can you give a bit general idea about living expenses as well because I get this question a lot of time from so many students that if we go on our own self like their own funding uh what would be their monthly expenditure to cover everything so through your experience can you share a little bit from both these countries so the living expenses in france and germany are almost the same but in france you get cough which is um you get some money from the government if you're a student for your accommodation but overall i for a comfortable living, you should consider like 700 or 800 euros per month. But you can even go with 600, 500, depending upon your accommodation, because the main uh, expense I would say is your accommodation. In France, you generally get some like 400, 500 euros accommodation. In Germany, it's almost the same, but it also depends on the city, uh, on the location on which you are getting on. Big, like uh, here, I have the uh, student accommodation which is a bit uh, less a bit less than the France which, uh, which was more private so I would say if you are considering these countries you should have an idea for 600 or between 600 and 800 euros all right and um, how's the transport system because in Germany I feel it's a bit more expensive than France. How was your experience in your city? No, the transportation is free in Germany because I can go everywhere in Germany if I have the student uh, ticket, which is, for example, the government pays uh, our semester fee, which is 900 euros. So out of that 900, 230 euros it's, it's for your transportation for one semester. So if you have the semester ticket, you can go everywhere, 
you don't you just cannot use the ICE which is the fast train otherwise you can go to everywhere in germany even to some other countries i'm planning to go to austria and it's for free so i think the transportation is pretty good in germany you don't have to pay anything hmm, that's nice so that's all from my side but uh, can you share in the end uh, to all those people who are interested in this program something a little more about this program something you found it very interesting which you weren't expecting or some uh big opportunity you can one can get from this program something which can benefit all those who are interested in this program so the program is pretty good i would sponsor it but uh, i would say if you are more if you are really into particle physics this is a really good one doesn't matter if you are into theory or experimental because you would have both the courses and then you can decide which one uh, you are more focused into and you can have a good idea what particle physics is and then you have opportunities with the experts in the field and regarding the motivation or the applying process i think it's easy you don't need much documents or other things that are very let's say too complex it's just easy it's simple if you are interested you should apply and be be confident have faith in yourself and it's a it's a good one all right thank you zan for joining here today and i hope this information will be uh, interesting and useful for all those who are interested in pursuing a uh, a uh, master's degree in physics and all the best to all those who are eyeing to apply for this program next year and if you are an erasmus mundus scholar and want to uh, join me and want to share your experience feel free to contact me on linkedin or instagram and thank you zan once again for joining and have a nice day goodbye